Los Angeles was the destination for caravans from Santa Fe. The New Mexicans came in the fall when the grasses were coming up. Los Angeles, even though it wasn't very large at that time, became quite a capital for obtaining mules. There were lots of horses and jacks that grazed in the wintertime with all that grass. The ranchos covered a good share of the coastal area with many, many horses. When Armijo arrived in California, he probably noticed everyone riding horses. It was said a true Californio did not walk if he could ride. Cattle were raised for the hide and tallow trade and ran wild on the open range. To handle them, vaqueros needed horses trained to obey the rider, even if it required getting within roping range of a grizzly. By the time Armijo arrived in 1826, they had a reputation as the best horsemen of the time. The vaqueros were proud of their skills and competitions were frequent. Today, California still show off at Riata Ropings. We're at Santa Margarita. They're having Riata Ropings stock horse today. A lot of the old style skills that they're keeping alive and it's, it's a great deal. It's a lot of fun. style is more of the Spanish style. In this event, they, they wanted us to cut two animals out of that herd. They'll point us on how we work together. They give you 10 minutes and catch and put them on the ground. He's coming seven. Uh -huh. uh, it's just got a half report. California is with Riatas, head and heel, uh, as easy and slow as possible. That's about how we do it. He's in Hackmore. He's five years old, and I'm going to start progressing him on into the bridal. I'm from Mojai, California. I've got a Gary Fields bit. I've uh, got a half grade mouthpiece in it. Majority of the good bridle up horses. There's a lot of spade bits on it. Oh, it's just easier on them. It's more control. It just softening in the mouth. I could put him on a spade bit. He'll just about take anything I have. Just a rawhide rope made out of cowhide. What carol rope style rope. And gotta let it slide more because it'll break a lot easier in the poly and the nylon. And it takes a lot more than us to use one. My name is Adrian. I'm from Moore Park, California. I'm a weekend warrior. It means I help my neighbors whenever they need help. Brandings or gathers or cows are out or anything like that. Adrian is working with a Riata. I love it. It's good weight in your hand. It's smooth. It's drapes. It's got its own personality. You know, get your Riata just right. It just does things that a poly or a nylon won't do. I got interested when I met my husband about six years ago. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Just for me, it's really hard just to learn the different swings on the different loops. I just started practicing with a hula hand. I've always done a sidearm up until now. Occasionally, I go day work with my boyfriend who works at Tahoe Ranch. Other than that, I teach high school. Um, growing up, my uncle had a farm in Idaho and I would help them gather cattle, and I've always had a passion. at a Bruce Hainer Barkenio bit and a really neat cabezada head stall that goes with it. Well, initially we'd like the big buckles, but now that I've got it in my hands and I got a hold of it, it's got these two crickets and they're iron crickets with copper inlays and they sing pretty nice when you get them going together. I like that. Those copper ferrules are neat. Plus the bit's beveled really nice on the inside. It's pretty cool. I was finally able to get one of Bruce's bits and uh, this year, uh, this last year, and I got a horse that's ready to go in the two-rain, and he's been riding him for, for about three months in the two-rain. It's fun to get him to that point. This is a rawhide hackamore, and it's a nose band, hangs around a horse's face. It communicates with the horse through pressure. You, When you're using a hackamore, you tie it with a set of hair reins, and you 
create a little bit of space for the horse to move into on one side and then you put a little pressure on him with the other side to ask him to move and then when he moves over there you take that pressure off. This Makate is a hair rope. It is 22 feet long. It is made out of horse mane hair. Recycling is really important. As responsible stewards of the land, the buckaroos have been at it for a long time. We recycle everything, cows, horses, everything. And this particular horse has been recycled into uh, this hair rope. This rope now is gonna be tied into a set of reins and a lead. And I tie and untie this thing every day. Bill Black put me onto that years ago, he says, well, you take your boots off at night, don't you, and give your feet a rest. It makes sense that a guy ought to take his McCarty off every night. Shoot, it doesn't take too much time to tie it in the morning, and you're gonna take four years and six years to make a bridle horse anyway. There's no sense being in a big hurry about getting going in the morning. When the horse is ready for a bit, the vaquero will need a set of Ramal reins. The rawhide reins with Ramal and kangaroo buttons on them. That's the Ramal part. It's just like a quirt. It's, something to urge the horse a little bit. They're made to go on the bit, but they put chains between the end of them and the bit. So when the horse gets his head in the water, he don't get the reins wet, because rawhide gets a little different when it gets wet. They're hard to get over a horse's head. You're not supposed to take them off the saddle horn and they get off. You're supposed to have a lead rope to lead your horse with. These are bits I made in Fresno. Some people call it a half a heart. In other words, that'd be half there and the other half would be here. This is a Santa Barbara style right here. These, this is a spade bit. There's not too many people using them today. Most of them are using this, this type of a mouthpiece here. This is just a bit that you could put on a real broke horse. He rides real light because of the mouthpiece. It's a Sonora cheek. That cheek come out of Mexico. And they're usually one piece that just sweeps back. Santa Susana, they call them here. I guess because they started in Santa Susana. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Before my time. In the old days, they said in this country that you could ride a, a Visalia, you could ride a Hamley, or you could ride a Porter because they were so well-made saddles and held together. But the Visalia, California style, as we call it, were always the most beautiful. The carving, the skill, the craftsman, the Spanish influence. They liked a little bit of silver. These horns in a wade tree are all wood carved into the fork. The horn wrap on this saddle is typical. It's called mule hide, but it's for protection of the horn itself to give a base for your galleys to turn and run. <laughs>